Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I want to ring in the new year and give you some of my latest art supply recommendations for 2022. So these are sort of add-ons to last year's videos about watercolor and gouache supplies that I already did. And if you haven't seen them already, I'll link them in the description below. Um, but these uh, recommendations today will be some of my latest discoveries and things that I've been really loving this year. So if you're interested, keep watching. So the first item is this set of 10 watercolors by Daniel Smith, and it's from the Jean Haynes Master Collection. And Jean Haynes is a master watercolorist. And what she did is she teamed up with Daniel Smith and selected or curated a collection of 10 different colors to go into the set. And these 10 colors are very sophisticated. They're jewel tones, earth tones, um, things that will really elevate your color palette. So if you've had trouble working uh, with you know, primary colors or, or simpler colors, maybe it's worth trying uh, a set like this that have these very sophisticated, uh, pre-mixed, rich colors uh, that, are, that are absolutely stunning. So you have everything from like these very deep uh, jewel tone greens to a blue, which she calls a lunar blue, which is kind of what you'd expect it to be, like the blue you'd find on the surface of the moon. Um, an Aussie red gold, which is like a rust color. Uh, just overall, the, the colors are absolutely spectacular. And so the next item is paper. And this one is actually kind of funny because I am usually a huge Arches fan and I don't usually deviate from their papers ever. I just, I trust the quality and I don't usually look for anything else as far as watercolor papers are concerned. But quite recently when I went to the store to buy you know more paper, because I was um, in need for a project, I couldn't find any because they were completely out of stock. And what I ended up doing was I ended up buying this um, block of watercolor paper by Legion called Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. And um, I fell in love with this paper. It is so beautiful, reacts so well with watercolor. And another thing that I really like about it is that the surface of the paper is a, is a brighter white than what you find on the arches. So your colors really pop off the paper and you don't have that ivory cast that you kind of have with the arches. So this paper is beautiful and uh, it's cheaper too. So I might have found a new paper. All right, so next up are two new paint brushes that I've added to my permanent collection and rotation of brushes. And that is two brushes by the Princeton Heritage Collection of Brushes. One of them being a number 16 brush, uh, 16 round, and the second one being a number six round. And I usually don't go with brushes that are as large as a number 16 because I, I work fairly small. But what I love about these brushes is that the tip of the brush is extremely fine and very precise. And so for the number 16, you can actually use the same brush for large washes of color, as well as the tiniest details that you would do on a number one or number two brush. So it's a great brush, really versatile and really reasonably priced. Okay, so next up is an item that I already had, but until recently, very rarely used. Um, and that is watercolor colored pencils. And I actually don't use them in the way you'd think I'd be using them, which is, you know, to create art with, or just, you know, to, to, to color with. Um, I actually have been using these as an alternative for a pencil when I'm doing my outlines. So I recently read a book by another artist called Claire Therese Gray, uh, who's a gouache artist based out of the UK. And she has this really cool trick, which I hadn't seen before, which is instead of using pencil, she uses colored pencil to do the outline of her drawings before she actually paints them. So what that does is instead of having to erase your pencil markings before you paint, um, the watercolor pencils actually melt into your watercolors, so you don't have like, any traces of the graphite showing through underneath your watercolors, and it's so much more convenient. So I've been experimenting with that a lot, and let me know in the comments below if you're interested in learning how I do it, um, but I think that that's a really helpful tip, and, um, and just a really clever solution to that age-old problem of you know, having the pencil markings show through your watercolor painting. 
All right, last but not least, I've been really into paints in pan format lately. And so I was gifted this set by Sennelier. And I really loved the idea of being able to have all these different colors accessible at all times on my desk and not having to squeeze whatever color I need, you know, for whatever project. So this was really helpful. However, I didn't actually really like the colors in this particular set. So what I ended up doing was um, purchasing an empty watercolor tin from Amazon. And so um, the Amazon tin is actually virtually identical to the Sennelier tin. And it ships with all of the pans that you need to create your own set. So the pans are empty and what you do is you can fill them out with all of your favorite colors. So instead of purchasing one of these pre-existing sets from, you know, Sennelier, Winsor & Newton, um, I really recommend just, you know, purchasing one of these empty tins from Amazon, which is so much cheaper, and filling it out with all of your favorite colors so that way your palette is customized to you. And that's it. Those are all of my recommendations for 2022. If you have any recommendations from me, I'd love to know. I'm always on the lookout for new supplies and um, the latest and greatest as far as art supplies are concerned. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.